Hello, bearded bee people. Welcome back to the B and K's Bees channel. <clears throat> Often I try to, when I'm thinking about what videos to do, I try to think of commonly asked questions, whether asked to me or asked online, or things that I have wondered at a certain part of the season. Um, and that would lead me to, it is October 5th, that would lead me to the very common question of how do I store my frames when they're not in use on a beehive. Uh, the real problem trying to be avoided is uh, wax moth damage. Now wax moths can be a, a big hassle, they can be a big problem. The comb that you've that you've seen get built and you've seen your bees work so hard to produce can be completely destroyed um, and if it's on an active colony that has too much space or too much comb for their ability to defend it then uh, it can really cause a lot of stresses on a bee colony. Now normally if you're managing your bee colony the way you should be they wouldn't have that extra space so they would not have any uh, problems dealing with the wax moths um, and my favorite one-liner in response to how do I deal with wax moths is the an active healthy and vigorous bee colony is the best method of deterring and or dealing with wax moth issues. Um, I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that wax moths have never ever been the cause of a colony death. They can be the last piece of a series of problems that cause the death and they are usually the most obvious signs of stress when you get into a colony you'll say wow these wax moths really did a, a, a number on my bees when in reality uh, probably your bees were already diminished in strength or population due to some other thing or you had once again given them too much space and they didn't have the ability to defend all the frames uh, but either way, it's not the, uh, the initial and final cause of death, usually. So, but we're not talking about today, we're not talking about uh, frames on bee colonies, because hopefully all of your frames are jam-packed with bees right now. It's October 5th once again, and uh, fall is well underway, and uh, winter is headed at us. So shouldn't be an issue as far as that goes. What should be an issue or what is an issue for a lot of people is storing those frames after you've extracted honey or after you've condensed boxes or combined colonies and you have these frames that you want to put to use in colonies next year and the year after that and the year after that and so to avoid these problems with wax moths most people uh, decide to go the chemical route, the uh, para mothballs. I don't like that idea because they smell horrific and chemically and because the state of California uh, has them listed as a known carcinogen. So I just, I mean, these are frames that we're hoping that our bees are going to put in honey that we are either going to eat ourselves or pass out to other people or sell with our name on it. And yeah, I understand that the fumes that are given off by these para mothballs are supposed to dissipate uh, quicker than regular mothballs and that's why that's the preferred method. It just that's not enough for me. I, I you know I w would never want to clean a dinner plate with something laced with arsenic and then eat off, off of that plate the next day. It just those are two things that uh, you would always obviously want to keep separate. Uh, so that along those lines, I just don't like the idea of putting para mothballs in my honey supers. So what I do, and what I have done in the past, is after letting the bees clean out the extracted frames, um, I've put them in heavy-duty trash bags and duct taped them up. Uh, I've heard people say that the wax moths will get in regardless of how heavy-duty the trash bag is, but I've not had that happen. I have had them get in when uh, stacking these boxes, the you know stress or, or, or snag on one of them, and it causes a little hole. And if there is a little hole, those wax moths are going to find it. So if you do go that route, be careful how you're dealing with those boxes and how you're storing them. Um, and you also want to obviously make sure that 
you know, you have a method of, of mouse control because mice would like to, to call that home too, and the mice certainly won't defend off uh, wax moths the way bees would. So if a, a mouse breaches your bag, then you're probably going to have wax moth issues as well as, you know, all the issues that mice bring. So what I'm saying is those bags are not foolproof. Um, but another method that I like to use, and that uh, is kind of necessary for me as far as the fact that I don't really have the ability to wrap all of my boxes, the other method that I use is open sunlight. Um, it's not too bright in here, but most of these frames are blank foundation, except for the medium stuff. Um, the medium stuff is all drawn because we don't have any place for that in our bee yard anymore except for his honey supers. But most of these boxes and these frames in these boxes are foundation. Some of them aren't though. So I like to try to keep the shed door open um, for a good portion of the day every day. That is, once again, not a foolproof method, but the secondary, the fix to when the problem does show up, uh, you know, is not that difficult. So I'm not worried about it enough to go down the chemical route. So when inevitably all of your methods uh, prove to be fallible and a wax moth finds its way into your boxes and starts destroying your stuff, uh, a 36 to 48 hour trip to the freezer will take care of all of those issues. Um, <clears throat> so I wouldn't necessarily do that right now because then you'd just be placing those boxes back into the shed. So what I do like to do is place them into a freezer for two days and then install into an active and healthy colony for cleanup. Um, if you go down that route, uh, it's really, you know, simpler than you'd think. The freezing kills the moths and the bees clean up the comb uh, very, very effectively. So, the wax moth infestation does not have to be the end, <laughs> you know, it does not have to be the end of those frames and it doesn't have to be the ruination of your bees' hard work. Uh, it's fairly easily cleaned up and, like I said, there are methods to to keep those wax moths out. If you don't have a hundred boxes to store, I would recommend after the bees clean it up, um, wrapping them up in the heaviest duty trash bag you can find, usually the like lawn bags, um, and just duct tape it really, really tight. And be careful storing it and you'll probably have some pristine frames to use the next year. Uh, but once again, if you don't, if something goes wrong in that process, um, it's fairly easy to clean up. So try to do away with the pair of mothballs if you feel like I do and the fact that you just don't feel like eating something that was in direct contact with, uh, with that gross stuff. Um, but I don't, either way, let me know about your methods of wax moth deterrent and how you fix your frames afterward um, in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. But otherwise, get out there and have some fun with your bees.